Chike, why are you doing this? She asked. We lost the baby. How can we celebrate something that isn't happening? We are not going to announce this miscarriage, he said. We are going to keep pretending you are still pregnant. Do you hear me? May I feel my grandson kick? As Mr. Izani reached out to touch Naji's tummy, she stood up abruptly and walked away. <laughs> Mr. Izani had always been a man of principles, valuing hard work, integrity, and family above all else. His son, Chike, however, had none of these values. Chike's reckless behavior had been a source of constant disappointment for Mr. Ezani. He partied, spent money extravagantly, had numerous affairs, and showed no interest in settling down, nor did he want to take on any real responsibilities. One evening, Mr. Ezani decided it was time to speak with his son. He called Chike into his study a room that was filled with the symbols of his hard-earned success. Sit down, Chike, Mr. Izani ordered. We need to talk. Chike, sensing the gravity of the situation, reluctantly took a seat. What is it, father? He asked, trying to mask his irritation. Mr. Izani took a deep breath. I have heard about your latest antique. Another party, more women, and more money wasted. Do you have any idea what you're doing to yourself? To this family? Chike shrugged, but his nonchalance only fueled his father's anger. I'm just having fun, Papa. What's the big deal? The big deal, Chike, is that you're squandering everything I've worked for over the years. You're acting like a child, not a man, and it's time you grew up. Chike rolled his eyes. What do you want me to do, Papa? Do you want me to get married and have kids just to make you happy? I'm not ready for that yet, Papa. Mr. Ezani's eyes narrowed. Yes, Chike, that's exactly what I want you to do. But not just for me, for yourself too, for your future, and for the family's legacy. Chike scoffed. And Papa, what if I don't? What will you do? If you don't, Chike, you will not see a single naira of my inheritance. You will only receive it after you produce a son. And this is not just about having an heir. It's about proving that you can be responsible, that you can take care of a family. Chike's face turned red with anger. You can't do that, Papa. I can. And I will, Mr. Izani said firmly. This is my final decision. Now get out of my office. Chike stormed out of the room, furious and defiant. But deep down, he knew his father was serious. The condition for his inheritance was set, and it was up to him to meet up with it. Naji was gentle and kind-hearted. She had a calm and easygoing nature. She worked as a nurse in one of Lagos' busy hospitals. Unlike the flashy and extravagant women Chike usually dated, she was simple and unassuming which made her an easy target for Chike's manipulation. Chike and Unnaji met at a charity event organized by the hospital where she worked. He was immediately struck by her beauty and the contrast she presented to the women he usually pursued. Seeing an opportunity, he turned on his charm, presenting himself as a caring and responsible man. Unnaji, who had always believed in seeing the good in people, was quickly taken by his charm. Within three months, Chike had convinced her to marry him, promising her a life of love and stability. Unaware of his true motives and desperate to believe in the fairy tale he painted, she agreed. Little did she know she was stepping into a web of deceit, spawned by a man driven by greed and desperation. When Chike introduced Unnaji to his father, Mr. Izani was initially very suspicious. It had only been three months since their intense conversation about Chike's inheritance, and the sudden appearance of a fiancé seemed too convenient. Mr. Izani couldn't shake the feeling that Chike might be trying to deceive him once again. However, when he met Naji, his suspicion began to wane. Her calm and gentle nature immediately struck a chord with him. She was nothing like the women Chike usually associated with. 
and her genuine kindness and humility were evident. Mr. Ezani found himself liking her instantly. Despite his initial doubts, he saw in Unaji a potential positive influence on his son. He hoped that her presence might help Chike mature and embrace the responsibilities he had long avoided. While he remained cautious, Mr. Ezani decided to give Chike the benefit of the doubt, trusting that Unaji's goodness might bring about the change he had always wished to see in his son. The first five months of their marriage, Chike and Unaji's relationship appeared to be smooth and harmonious. Chike put on a convincing act, showering his wife with affection and attention. He played the role of a loving husband and perfectly making Unaji believe she had found her happily ever after. Chike was impatient to secure his inheritance and fate seemed to favor him three months after their wedding. Unaji discovered she was pregnant and Chike was over the moon with excitement. He couldn't wait to share the news, boasting to his father and friends about his sharp shooting abilities. When Mr. Ezani learned that he was going to be a grandfather, his initial reaction was a mix of joy and caution. Despite his lingering doubts about Chike's maturity, the news of an impending grandchild filled him with hope, a chance for his son to finally embrace responsibility. He deeply wished that his late wife, Amaka, were alive to share in this moment. Sitting alone in his study, surrounded by photographs of their life together, Mr. Ezani whispered to one of the pictures, Amaka, I wish you were here to see our boy. He's going to be a father. I hope this will be the change we've been praying for. As the days turned into weeks, Chike became obsessed with the pregnancy. He wanted to know every detail from Unaji's diet to her doctor's appointments. He insisted on accompanying her to every checkup asking endless questions and making sure everything was perfect. It seemed as though the pregnancy was all he cared about. Towards the end of the first trimester, Naji began to experience severe abdominal pain and bleeding. Alarmed, Chike rushed out to the hospital, his heart pounding with fear. Despite the doctor's best efforts, they were unable to save the pregnancy. Chike was devastated. He had pinned all his hopes and dreams on this child, seeing it as his ticket to securing his inheritance and proving himself to his father. Now, all those dreams were shattered. He felt a mix of anger, frustration, and helplessness. Naji, on the other hand, was devastated. She had been overjoyed at the prospect of becoming a mother and had already started to bond with the baby growing inside her. The loss was a deep emotional blow and she grieved not only for the child she had lost, but also for the future she had envisioned. Chike's true nature didn't stay hidden for long. He started coming home late, often with flimsy excuses. He resumed his old habits of partying and spending time with other women. Naji, initially confused and hurt, tried to confront him, but Chike dismissed her concerns, becoming increasingly irritable and distant. One week after the devastating miscarriage, Chike made a shocking decision. He planned a baby shower, inviting friends and family to celebrate the arrival of a child that no longer existed. Naji was deeply confused. She couldn't understand why they would go through with a baby shower when she was no longer pregnant. Chike, why are you doing this? She asked. We lost the baby. How can we celebrate something that isn't happening? Chike's expression turned stern. We are not going to announce this miscarriage, he said. We are going to keep pretending you are still pregnant. Do you hear me? Naji's eyes widened in disbelief. Why would we do that, Chike? Because if my father finds out, I will lose the inheritance. We need to keep up the pretense until we can figure something out. Naji felt a surge of anger and sorrow. This is insane, Chike. How can you even think of lying to your father? You don't understand, Unaji. This inheritance is everything. Without it, I am nothing. Just do as I say, okay? And stop asking me stupid questions. Despite her protests, Chike's determination and manipulations prevailed. Unaji, still grieving and emotionally exhausted, felt cornered and reluctantly agreed to go along with the plan. As the days went by, 
Chike bought a fake tummy for her to wear, making her appear convincingly pregnant. Trapped in the web of deceit, Naji wore the fake tummy. The baby shower went ahead as planned, with friends and family gathering to celebrate. Naji wore a forced smile and reluctantly joined her husband in popping the gender balloon, which revealed they were having a son. Family and friends were excited and congratulated the couple, but Unaji felt like a puppet, controlled by Chike's greed and desperation. The event, which should have been a joyous occasion, became a painful reminder of their loss and the lies they were living. One afternoon, Mr. Izani decided to pay a surprise visit to his son and daughter-in-law. He arrived with gifts and a warm smile, eager to see how Unaji was doing and to feel his grandson kick. As they sat in the living room, Mr. Izani turned to Naji, his eyes filled with anticipation. Naji, my dear, how are you feeling? He asked kindly. May I feel my grandson kick? Naji's heart raised. She felt a wave of panic wash over her. She glanced at Chike, who gave her a stern look, silently urging her to go along with the plan. As Mr. Izani reached out to touch Naji's tummy, she stood up abruptly and walked away. Did I do anything wrong, Chike? He asked, feeling perplexed. No, Papa, she's just exhausted, Chike replied. Naji felt her heart sink. Her father-in-law was a very nice man and she hated lying to him. On second thought, she went back to the living room. I'm so sorry, Papa, I didn't mean to be rude. Of course, she said softly, praying that he wouldn't notice anything in Amis. Mr. Izani waited his hand resting on the fake tummy, hoping to feel a kick. After a few moments, he looked up, confused and concerned. I don't feel anything, he said, with worry. Naji felt pity for him and struggled to maintain her composure. Sometimes the baby is just quiet. Maybe he's asleep. As Annie nodded, though he seemed unconvinced, he patted Naji's hand reassuringly. I'm sure everything is fine, he said though his eyes betrayed a hint of doubt. After Mr. Izani left, Naji broke down in tears. She felt trapped and helpless, torn between her loyalty to Chike and her conscience. Chike, however, remained focused on his goal, oblivious to the emotional toll it was taking on his wife. As Naji entered the last trimester of her supposed pregnancy, the burden of the deception grew heavier. One day, Chike announced with a forced enthusiasm, it's time to go baby shopping. The words pierced Naji's heart. What a selfish, heartless man she had married. She felt suffocated by the lies and knew she had to find a way out of the mess her marriage had become. But she was at a loss for what to do. Chike had arranged to visit a motherless baby home where he had paid for the opportunity to select a newborn. When they arrived, he began flipping through pictures of the available babies as if they were commodities to be purchased. He scrutinized each picture, finding something to complain about with every baby. This one has a funny nose, he muttered, tossing the picture aside. And this one looks too small. Naji, horrified by his callousness, tried to intervene. Chike, these are children, not products. We should be grateful for any baby we can welcome into our home. Chike snapped at her, his eyes cold and unfeeling. I'm paying good money for this, Naji. The baby should be perfect. Naji's heart broke further. She saw the true extent of Chike's greed and lack of empathy. The babies, innocent and vulnerable, were being treated as mere objects in his quest for inheritance. She felt a deep sense of shame and sorrow, realizing how far they had swayed from any semblance of morality. As Chike continued his ruthless selection process, Naji's mind raced. She knew she couldn't continue living this lie, but she felt trapped and powerless, not knowing what to do. Finally, Chike settled on a baby that would be born to a 15-year-old orphan, conveniently timed to coincide with Naji's supposed due date. As the time approached for Naji to give birth, Chike planned a trip out of town, intending to claim that the baby arrived while they were away. Mr. Izani, overjoyed at the prospect of becoming a grandfather, went out of his way to ensure Naji had everything she needed. He sponsored a shopping spree, buying clothes, 
diapers, and all the essentials for both Naji and the baby. His excitement was palpable, and he often spoke about how he couldn't wait to hold his grandson. One afternoon, as Naji unpacked the gifts Mr. Ezani had thoughtfully provided, she felt a deep pang of guilt and sorrow. The sight of the tiny clothes and baby items bought with such love and anticipation broke her heart. She realized the extent of the deception and the pain it would cause Mr. Ezani when the truth eventually came out. Sitting amidst the baby items, she felt tears welling up in her eyes. She knew she couldn't continue living this life, especially not to someone as kind and caring as Mr. Ezani. His excitement and generosity made her see the gravity of their deceit in a new light. She confided in her best friend Uloma, pouring out her heart, revealing the entire story of the miscarriage, the fake pregnancy, and Chike's relentless pursuit of his inheritance. Uloma listened intently, her face reflecting a mix of shock and empathy. Naji, you can't keep living like this, Uloma said firmly. You need to tell the truth. It's the only way to free yourself from this nightmare. Naji nodded as tears ran down her face. I know, Uloma, but I'm scared. What if Chike retaliates? What if Mr. Izani hates me for lying? Uloma took Naji's hands in hers. You have to trust that the truth will set you free, Naji. There's no other way to this. Chike and Naji traveled, and after two weeks, they returned with a brand new baby boy. Mr. Izani was overjoyed his heart swelling with pride and happiness at the sight of his grandson. Chike too was elated, basking in the success of his deceitful plan. Two weeks later, a grand naming ceremony was organized. Close friends and families gathered to celebrate the new addition to the family. The atmosphere was festive with laughter, music, and the aroma of delicious food filling the air. Mr. Izani, beaming with pride, couldn't stop talking about his grandson and the bright future he envisioned for him. As the ceremony progressed, Naji felt a growing sense of dread. She knew this was the moment she had to reveal the truth. With Ulama by her side for support, she took a deep breath and stepped forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Naji began, I have something very important to say. Chike, sensing what his wife was about to do, felt a surge of panic and quickly moved towards her. He grabbed her arm and whispered, What are you trying to do? I can't keep living this lie, Naji said, almost as a plea. Please, let me go, Chike. Sit down and shut up, woman. You ruin everything. At this point, Mr. Ezani intervened. What lie? Let go of her arm, Chike, Mr. Ezani ordered. At that point, Chike knew there was nothing more he could do. I have something very important to say, Naji continued. This baby is not mine. I lost my pregnancy months ago. Chiki made me pretend I was still pregnant so he wouldn't lose his inheritance. We've been living a lie and I can't do it anymore. Gasps of shock rippled through the crowd. Mr. Zani's face turned pale, his eyes wide with shock and hurt. What? What did you just say, Naji? He asked. Olama stepped forward, presenting the evidence they had gathered. It's true, Papa. Chike bought a fake tummy for Naji to wear. He even arranged to buy this baby from a motherless baby home to keep up with the lie. Chike tried to interrupt, but the crowd's outrage drowned him. Is this true? Chike, is this true? Mr. Izani demanded, his voice trembling with anger. Chike stammered, unable to come up with a convincing lie. You don't understand, father, he snapped, his voice mixed with anger and desperation. I did what I had to do for us, for the family. But Mr. Izani's stern gaze and the collective disapproval of the gathered guests silenced him. The truth was out and there was no denying it. Naji knelt before her father-in-law and said, I'm so sorry, Papa. I'm so sorry I deceived you. It was never my intention. Please, forgive me. Mr. Zani turned to Naji, his expression softening. Thank you for telling me the truth, my dear. 
Nnaji continued, I want everyone to know that I will not let this innocent baby suffer because of our mistakes. I have decided to adopt him and raise him as my own. He deserves love and support and I will provide that for him. I also want to announce that I am separating from Chike. I cannot continue this marriage built on lies and manipulations. The room erupted in chaos. Friends and family members expressed their shock and disappointment, some shouting at Chike, others comforting Naji. Chike stood dumbfounded. His expression, a mix of anger, regret, and fear. Mr. Zani turned to Naji and said, I'm deeply sorry for the pain my son has caused you. You have my full support in raising this child, and I will stand by you in whatever you need. After he said that, he got up and left. So did some of the guests. You want to leave me? Chike shouted, his face red with fury. After everything I've done for you, you think you can just walk away and ruin my life? Naji stood her ground, her voice calm but firm. Chike, this marriage has been built on lies and manipulations. I can't live like this anymore. I need to find my own path. For my sake and for the babies. Chike's anger only intensified. You ungrateful woman, do you know what this will do to me, to my reputation? You're making a huge mistake, Naji. Chike's eyes blazed with anger. You think you're so righteous, don't you? You think you can just walk out and everything will be fine? You're wrong, Naji. You're dead wrong. He took a step towards her, his body tense with rage. But before he could get any closer, Ulama stepped in, her presence a protective shield. Chike, that's enough, Ulama said firmly. Naji has made her decision. You need to respect that. Chike glared at Ulama, his anger momentarily redirected. Stay out of this, Ulama. This is between my wife and I. No, Chike, this is about Naji's right to her life free from your manipulation. You need to let her go. Chike's outburst continued for a few more moments. But the presence of Getz and the disapproving stares, with the help of a few of Chike's friends, was able to quiet him. With a frustrated growl, Chike turned and stormed out of the house. Naji felt a wave of relief wash over her. She had done the right thing, and with Uloma's support, she knew she would face whatever came next. Three months had passed since Naji revealed the truth. Mr. Eza and his health took a serious turn for the worse. The heartbreak caused by Chike's lies, combined with his already ailing heart, left him frail. Realizing that his time might be short, he decided to address the matter of his inheritance once and for all. He called for a meeting with his legal advisor, Chike and Naji. The atmosphere was tense as they gathered in Mr. Ezani's study room. Mr. Ezani, looking weaker than ever, began to speak. I have called you all here because I need to set things right. Chike, your actions have caused me great pain. I had hoped you would become a responsible man, but your deceit has shown otherwise. Naji, you have shown incredible strength and integrity, and I regret that you had to endure such hardship. He paused, taking a deep few breaths before continuing. I have decided how my inheritance will be divided. 50% will go to Naji and her son, who has proven herself worthy of this, and I know you will use it wisely. Naji, holding back tears, nodded gratefully. She had not expected such generosity, but was deeply moved by Mr. Eza and his words. 30% of my estate will go to charity, specifically to motherless baby homes. These children deserve a chance at a better life, and I want to ensure they are cared for. Chike shifted uncomfortably, sensing that his portion was yet to be addressed. Mr. Zani turned to him, his expression stern. As for you, Chike, you will receive 20% of the inheritance, but only if you prove yourself worthy. You must become a better person, and this will be determined and approved by Naji. Until then, you will receive nothing. Father, this is unfair, Chike protested, his voice rising. I've made mistakes, but this is too much. Chike, 
Fairness is not the issue here. It's about being responsible. You need to understand the consequences of your actions and work towards becoming a better person. Chike's face fell, realizing the gravity of his father's words. He knew that earning Naji's approval would not be easy, given the pain he had caused her. Mr. Isa and his legal advisor nodded, confirming that the new terms would be legally binding. This is my final decision, Mr. Ezani said, his voice filled with sadness and hope. I pray that this will guide you, Chike, to become the man I always thought you could be. Chike paced back and forth, his hands clenched into fists as he thought of what to do. He cornered Unaji when she was about to leave and said, You think you can just take my father's inheritance and leave me with nothing? If you think I will let you and that bastard child live with my money, you have another thing coming. Thank you so much for listening to my story today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give us a like and share the video with any other person you think will enjoy it too. Let me know what you took away from the story in the comments, okay? And I'll see you in my next one. If you want uh, the part two of the story, then let me know in the comment section. Bye.